Hey everybody, welcome to part 7 in our series on transferring data from Access to Excel. In this video we're going to talk about how to format your spreadsheet after you get your data over to Excel. We we'll use VBA to change the uh, colors of cells and to apply conditional formatting. So let's go over to our code window real quickly. I want to uh, just review very quickly where we ended up with and at the end of our last video. And if you're starting here with uh, in the middle and, and not starting at the beginning just to show you what, what we've got so far. We have a, a uh, string with our SQL for a query in it and here we are uh, populating a record set from that, S from that string. And below there we're starting up Excel here and grabbing a new workbook and getting a reference to the, the first worksheet, worksheet in the workbook. And from here down we are setting up our columns, our column headings, titles for the page and then we get down to here and we are iterating through our record set one record at a time and writing one row at a time to our spreadsheet and after we finish looping through our record set get to end of file we're doing some cleanup at the end adding a total line adding some formulas to the total line and uh, we might add some lines as well to the whole the whole spreadsheet I want to really quickly create our spreadsheet as it looks so far and show you where we're trying to go tonight or today. I want to today I want to shade this column heading in a light gray and I want to put the same light gray in this separator column I have here. And after that I want to apply conditional formatting to this column so that we can color code different ranges of these discounts. Right? So head over to our code window again. Go down to where we are building our column headings. Here we are. So we've his, here we have built our column headings and we have stirred them and made them bold. I'm going to add the shading here. I'm going to use the same range that we have above and We'll use the interior property here to refer to the interior of the cell. Use the color property of the interior property. And set it equal to a color. So three ways to specify colors in Access. The first is to use built-in Visual Basic constants that looks something like this. VB, oops, I can't type. VB red, for instance. A small collection of these, so you don't have the full range of all the colors you might want to choose from here. A uh, second way is to use a long number, by that I mean a five-digit number that Access has used internally for, for years to refer to colors. Um, I never use that actually because it's just, a, I find it to be a pain or find it to be difficult to, to, to calculate that number. It's just so much easier, in my opinion, to use the third method, which is RGB, the red, green, blue. However, you might need to know how to work with that long number if you need to change the color of a cell and potentially need to change it back to its original color. In, in that case, when you interrogate an object in, vision, in, in Access, it will return to you that long number. So if you're going to be find yourself in a situation of needing to change a cell, change a color, and change it back, then you're going to need to save that value in a long data type and, and then reapply it as a long data type later on. But what I'm going to use today is the RGB value. And by that, the, the RGB stands for red, green, and blue. So I'm going to I'm going for a gray, which is 217, comma 217, comma 217. One of the things I like about one of the things I like about RGB is it's easy to figure out what an RGB value is. If you see a color on the internet, let's say that you like and you want to use, I'm going to drag my uh, my uh, Microsoft Paint window over here. I've pulled a clipping from the internet here and I have an image here. In order to get an RGB value, all you've got to do is you know, do a screen copy and maybe paste it into Microsoft Paint like I've done here. Click on your eyedropper and then click on the color you want. That selects that color. Then come over to the Edit Colors box and it'll pop up a color selector where you have access to all the potential colors available. And that color here has been selected and it shows you the red, the green, and the blue value right there. All you got to do then is plug it into your formula in your code window right there. Alright, 
So we've applied shading to our column headings. I'm going to do the same thing to a separator column. I'm not going to make you watch me type that one. It's the same exact code, just a different range. Okay, so there's our code for adding the, the gray to the separator column. Again, um, so we're going E4 down to E I minus 1. And to remind you what I is again, I is an integer that we're using to keep track of what row we are currently working with on the spreadsheet side. Okay, and at the, this point in time, I'm working with this with this code and, and, and the separator column. We have already looped through our record set, written all the data to the spreadsheet, and moved on to the next row, which is our total line. So I currently represent our total line when we're here in the code. So I wanted my shading to stop at the row above the total line. I wanted to stop on the last line of data, so it's I row I minus one. So let's save that and run over and take a look. You see here we've got shading in our columns and our head column headings and shading in our separator column. All right, next I want to work on adding some colors to this discount column. I'm going to use conditional formatting, and we're going to talk about a little bit later why, when you might use conditional formatting, when you might use other other methods. But so we're going to, again we're going to work with the. I'm going to add. I'm going to set up a width here. Just to make it easier to work with our our items, with and I'm going to use the same range command we've been using. F F is the column that we want to work on, and again we want to go um, F5 down to F5 to include. We want to include our total line this time. We want to, we want to format the color on the total line as well. And here we're going to use format conditions. And then the add method of format conditions. We are open parentheses, and our first parameter that Access wants is for us to tell it what our formula is looking at as an input source. Okay, so on the spreadsheet we have a column of values, and there are decimal values. We have them formatted as percentages, but they're decimal values. And we want to color code the cells based on the value that's in the cell. So we're going to use, we're going to choose. Excel cell value to tell it the type of condition we're building. The next thing I want to know is the operator. What that means, so we're, we're looking at a cell value and we want to tell it uh, equal to something or greater than something, less than something, between something. And actually, in this case, we're going to use Excel between. When you use between, you use the next two parameters, formula one and formula two, to specify the values you want to look at as, as belonging to in there. Being in between. In this case, I'm going to set up our low, our low range, which is I use between zero and 0 0.0499. Okay, and remember, like I said, this is a percentage column, but the actual value in the cell is a decimal. So, in other words, 0 0.10 in the cell gets formatted to 10% when we apply the formatting. So, so we're working with with decimals here, and this 0 0.0499 would actually represent 4.99%. Okay. Go to the next line, and we want to tell it what we want to tell it to do when we're between 0 and 0, 0.499 is change the interior. Oops, my dot notation. Interior color to RGB, and this is a green color I'm building here. 157, 255, 157. Let me go sign there. There we go. Ew. Too many. There we go. All right. So that should turn anything below five percent green. Now I'm going to add two more conditions here. I'm not going to make you watch me type them. So it's the same, same format. Uh, for the second condition, the orange. This is the middle range, going between 0 0.05 to 0 0.0999. Okay, that would be between 5% and 9.99%. And the final range is anything above 10%. So this one looks a little bit different. We're still testing the Excel cell value, but instead of using between, we're going to use Excel greater or equal. So if the value in the cell is greater than or equal to 0 0.10, we're going to turn it a lighter shade of red. So let's save that and take a look what it gives us. 
And there we go. So we got our shading and our column headings. And then we've got our cells shaded based on the value. Ain't that bad? We've got a green here below 5. We've got quite a few here between 5 and 9. And we've got 2 above 10. 10 above. All right. So let's close this. And one final note about format conditions. Um, so we've, we've talked about two ways to to change the colors of cells in a spreadsheet. And um, <clears throat> so the question would be, which one do you use when? And I think that depends partly on how you've gotten your data into into Excel. If you have used the copy from record set method, remember that method just plops down all the data row, rows of data in one shot. And you have uh, no ability to interact with those rows while they're being written. You regain control of your code, so to speak, after that writing has occurred. So in that situation, I think that the format conditions is probably, or excuse me, the conditional formatting is probably your only option. You would have to keep track of where your first row of data is, and then of course you would um, you need to know where your last row of data is, and you have to apply the conditions after that. Um, unfortunately, uh, with conditional formatting, you're, you're limited to three sets of conditions on any particular range of cells. So that would be a, a drawback, I guess, of the conditional formatting. So if you are using the method we're using here to write data to a spreadsheet, and that would be iterating your way through a record set and writing one row of data at a time, you have a choice. You could insert some code right in here inside your loop and, and, and test a cell value and apply a color right here based on the cell value. Now, whether or not you do this, I think it's up to you. It's going to depend on how much data you think you're writing and whether you need more than three types of formats. It's like I referred to uh, when I was talking about adding lines to a spreadsheet. Any code that we add inside of this loop, it's iterating through our, through our record set, is going to slow us down incrementally. In other words, the more rows you have, the slower you're going to go. Because you add a you add a, a, a cost every time you go through that loop, so adding a, a color format or adding a, a color command in here inside your loop is going to slow you down just as much as it would be if you if you added drawing a line inside this loop. Uh, unfortunately, if you need to have more than three types of formats, I don't think you have much of a choice but to use this method. But if you're at three and under. I think for speed's sake, I would wait until I was finished looping through the entire record set, keep track of where the first row of data was, and of course we would know where the last row of data is, like we do in this example, and you apply your conditional formatting like we've done here. Well, I hope this video has been helpful, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.